Hi everyone! Sorry for no videos for last week. Uh, it was just kind of a really hectic week in which I worked a lot and then had to go to Ottawa and look for a place to live, which I found one, so it's like, fingers crossed that I get approved and I have a home for September and a place for all my books. Um, and I just kind of ran out of time and didn't really get a chance to film, so I just took the week off from um, having videos and I am back now with videos and today I have a haul for you. Now I know a couple months ago I was like freaking out about how I was going to move all my books and how many books I own and I have done a really good job of like culling my books. Um, I have gotten rid of like boxes and boxes of books and I didn't realize quite how many I'd accumulated um, through like buying and being gifted uh, until I went to gather them all together for this haul. I didn't realize it was quite this bad but yeah they sneak up on you. They like sneak in especially when you're ordering like one at a time. Um, so yeah, the, the first book I'm going to talk about is the one that kind of broke the back of my like not buying books online for a while and that is Richard Llewellyn's How Green Was My Valley which is one of my booktube recommends books and this is recommended to me by Mercedes um, over at Mercy's Bookish Musings and I've wanted to read this for a while, it's been on my wish list for a while and Wordery had their like 10% sale so I decided to order this because it was quite a bit cheaper than anywhere else and so that kind of started the book buying but yes I'm probably going to read this next month. Um, I don't really know too too much. It deals with a mining community in rural South Wales um, so yeah I'm, I'm looking forward to reading this. And then I also picked up Thomas Hardy's The Trumpet Major. Now I got this used online and it's actually in decent condition. Um, there's a couple scuffs on it and stuff and it's the shiny um, black spine edition which I'm less fond of than like the more uh, matte ones but uh, for the Hardy read-alongs this is the next one we were going to read it. It was the only one I didn't own um, that we have planned up until like October so I and it's out of print weirdly um, so yeah I had to pick this up used but now I have it so I have my hardy for next month. So like right now it's totally justifiable it's stuff that I was like planning on reading and just needed to order. Then I picked up a copy of Charlotte Bronte's Shirley. Now I do own this and I own this in another edition but it's a bind up and I'm really just not fond of bind ups so I decided to order the Penguin English Library edition because it's just it's so pretty. It's the papery one not the the rubbery one but it's still really beautiful and I'm just yeah I'm glad to have this in my collection because I really love this book so I wanted like a nice copy. The next four books were the Book Depository 5% sale and Yamini really pushed me to buy books so did Ange. They were both like just do it just do it get the books and I got the books because you know enablers. Um, so I ordered Emilia Pardo Bazan's The House of Ulua. I'm probably mispronouncing it. It's one of the Penguin Pocket classics. Um, it's one of the few female authors and it's also one of the only Spanish books. Um, so I was really interested in this one and decided to pick it up because it was quite cheap and then with the extra 5%. And then I also picked up um, another one of the Chicago University Press um, editions of these Bind Up of Euripides plays and this is the first one and it includes um, Alcetus, uh, Medea which I've read, The Children of Hercules which I have not read, and Hippolytus which I have read. Um, I want to get all of these and I had finished all the ones in the one that I already owned and I decided that I might as well pull the trigger and get another one and I won't buy another one. Like my rule for these are I have to finish all the plays in it and then I can buy the next one because um, they are a little bit more on the pricey side. I think they're like 16 or 17 dollars Canadian which is you know reasonable but and not crazy expensive but is you know a fair bit for you know ancient classical plays that I don't read all the time but yes I do want all of these on my shelves because I really like these editions. The translations are quite good and they just look really nice so yeah I got another one of these. And then I decided to get, despite my not having finished one of the Balzacs, I have an unread Balzac on my shelf, I bought another one and it is Eugene Grandet. Um, the reason why I got this is because I had previously purchased it used and it came in the wrong edition and I ended up like getting rid of it because it was an awful old, like it was falling apart, there were pages missing um, and somebody had commented that 
in one of my videos that I should get this one because it was really good. So at 10, like 5% off, I figured why not? I mean, I know I'm going to get to it. I know I love Balzac. It is a shorter Balzac, so it might be good for September when I'm like going back to school. And then I also decided to get Where Angels Fear to Tread by E.M. Forrester, um, which is, I love E.M. Forrester and it's the Penguin English Library Edition, so it's quite beautiful. And it's quite a short one. I think this is his first novel. Yep, yeah, it's his first novel. Um, so I'm looking forward to reading more Forrester. I haven't read any in quite a while, so yeah, I'm looking forward to picking that up. And then I did another book depository order, not for the 5% off, but I had one of those like prepaid Visa cards and it had like 11 something left on it. And so I managed to use it pretty much all up. I think there's like five cents left on it to get the Penguin English Library Edition of Evelina because I just, I realized I really like the Penguin English Library Editions. They're just, they're well put together. They're just, they're the font's always good, they're well bound, and yeah, I just, you know what, I really enjoyed this when I read it last year, and I just wanted a pretty copy of it. So the next little section of books are kind of books that I picked up because, I don't know, various reasons. I, I was influenced by friends, or like, I just, you know, wanted them, so yeah. Um, back when I was, I think, Last month I was talking about how I kind of had like a bit of a, a bad week at work and so I, I had read um, Thomas Hardy to console me and some people were like, only you would find Thomas Hardy, you know, cheerful and like cheering you up. Um, but I decided also that week to buy some Penguin English Library editions um, just because I was kind of, you know, not in a great, great headspace and I just, I wanted them and I could afford them and so I decided to do it. So I got... Samuel Butler's The Way of All Flesh, um, which is, it seems really interesting, like it, it deals with Victorian middle class, like, morals and kind of goes against them. Um, so this seems really, really interesting. Um, and yeah, it's just, it's really pretty. So why not? It was, I was going through like all the Penguin English libraries on my wish list and I was like, yeah. Yeah, that seems good. Um, I also picked up a copy of The Moonstone, which I already owned, and I haven't read this book. So I know that seems really dumb to have bought two copies, but the font in my other edition was really, really small. It was one of the Penguin Black Spines, and it was tiny. And when I'm reading at night, uh, especially if I'm tired because I work shift work, I sometimes have trouble focusing, and that means I don't read as much. So I decided to get um, the Penguin English Library edition, because I do want to read this, and I do have plans to read this. Um, so yeah, I just decided to to pull the trigger when I was having a bad week and, you know, got, got the edition where I can actually read it. Then, because I was reading so much Anthony Trollope and really, like, falling in love with them and, like, yeah, I, I decided to pick up Framley Parsonage, which is the fourth book in the Barset Shire um, Chronicles, the Chronicles of Barset Shire, and yeah, I just, it's, I want them all in these editions. I'm missing one. Um, after that, I realized the last two were out of stock, and so I have the last Chronicle of Barset, which is the last one. I'm missing the fifth one. I did order it, and then the people were like, oh, something went wrong and canceled by order. So I need to track it down and then I will have the complete collection of Anthony Trollope in like for the Chronicles of Barsetshire, Shire, which I'm excited about because I really enjoy those books. Then the, this next section is kind of, I went to the bookstore and I went with the intention of picking up one book and I walked out with four. And <laughs> they're in a theme because I don't normally like go to my local bookstore, but they had stuff in stock that I wanted. So that was really exciting. Um, it's, it's a big chain in Canada. It's just a chapter. So it's not like, it's not a local bookstore. Um, and they tend to just not have a very good selection. So I tend to not frequent it. Um, but I wanted to pick up The Geek Feminist Revolution by Cameron Hurley. Um, I'd heard a lot of really good things about it. And I just, I felt like some nonfiction. So I picked this up. I haven't read it yet, but I really want to get to it. I'm just kind of having a bit of a slow reading month at the time. And then Jean convinced me that I should pick this up because it is the September read for her feminist orchestra and it is Everyday Sexism by Laura Bates. Um, so yeah, I picked that up just, just because it was there and in stock. And then I also got Selfish, Shallow, and Self-Absorbed. Um, 
16 writers on the decision not to have kids, um, which is something that I think is really, really fascinating. This kind of like perception about people not wanting to have kids being like less than people who want to have kids. Um, as somebody who doesn't actually want to have children, I really want to read this. So I picked this up. I don't know if I'll get to this anytime soon, but I'm, I'm glad that this is on my shelf. And then I also picked up Margaret Atwood's The Edible Woman, which kind of fits in the like feminist, feminist theme, um, which I'm looking forward to reading. I haven't read it Atwood for like a year. So no, that's a lie. I read the Penelope ad this, this past month. So, um, but yeah, I, this is one of my friend's favorite books. So I decided to pick it up. And then the next four books were given to me by my friend. Um, she was like clearing out her, her bookshelves and she was getting rid of some of the stuff from university. And so she had a lot of like classics that she's like, I'm not, I'm not gonna read these. Do you want any of them? So there were four that I managed to stay um, that had been on my wish list. And I was like, well, I might as well. <laughs> so I have The Major Works of Samuel Taylor Coleridge, um, The Major Works of Lord Byron, uh, James Joyce's Ulysses, the 1922 text. Um, all of these are the Oxford editions. And then she also had D.H. Lawrence's Lady Chatterley's Lover in the penguin uh, cloth bound. So I decided when she was like, yeah, I don't want it. And I was like, yes, yes, I will take that. That is, this will be mine. It'll be pretty. I will add it to my cloth bound collection. Um, I haven't read any D.H. Lawrence, so I'm, I'm curious to dig into him. And then the last section that I have got like piles of books around me are the books that I bought yesterday. Um, I'm filming this on the Friday. So on Thursday, I went to Toronto. We kind of did a bookstore um, walk around. <laughs> I bought a lot of books. So the first four that I bought are all Penguin English Libraries. And they are all of the Sir Arthur Conan Doyle Sherlock ones. So I got A Study in Scarlet, The Hound of the Baskervilles, the Valley of Fear and The Sign of Four. Oh, I'm missing one. Huh. I thought that I had all of them and then I just realized I don't have the, the one about the Napoleons. Um, so I guess I'm missing some from this series, but I got four of them. Um, so I am quite, quite happy about that. Um, they were half price. So I figured why not? I was like, oh, am I gonna make a terrible decision today? I am gonna make a terrible decision today and buy all of these because I've been like hemming and hawing about buying them just cause like, it's not, I mean, I like Sherlock. Um, I haven't read any of the Sherlock stories, but I've seen them a couple times at BMV and I just decided to pull the trigger. So then I also bought Ali Smith's The Accidental because I really like Ali Smith and I decided I've been looking for this one um, and it hasn't been in stock in like my regular bookstore. I don't really carry a lot of Ally Smith. So when I saw it and it was quite cheap, it was like $5.99. I haven't actually kept any of the Ally Smith books that I've read, but I have enjoyed them, just not enough to like give them space on my shelf, if that makes sense. Um, so I thought, yes, I will get this for quite cheap. And then I also picked up another E.M. Forrester, A Passage to India in the Black Spine edition. Um, I'm not actually looking forward to reading this book. I've heard some pretty awful things about the way that Forrester deals with race in this. So I'm not looking forward to it, but because I'm reading his bibliography, I figured I might as well pick it up because it was quite a bit cheaper. Um, I think it was only, it was $7.99 and like it retails for like $20 in Canada. I thought, all right, well, at least it saves me some money and then I'm not like buying this book new because I was less, less than excited about that. Uh, the next four books I got super excited when I was in the store and they are some of the Persephone editions. Now these are, you cannot buy these basically in Canada um, in a retail store. They just, they just don't have them. Um, I've only ever seen them at BMV and like normally it's, it's, you know, they're, they're hard to track down, but apparently somebody there, there were a couple others that I didn't pick up because I already own them, but apparently somebody brought these all in and sold these to the store. And then like, literally I bought all of them. <laughs> so um, I got Making Conversation by Christine Longfed Ford. Um, these are quite expensive as well to buy in Canada. They're almost like $30. Uh, so the, 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 I got these for $9. Like none of the books I bought at BMV were over $9. So I was like, I, I can justify this. It's saving me money in the long run. And then I also got 
Cheerful Weather for the Wedding, which I'm really looking forward to reading, and it's by Julia Strachley. Um, and it's quite thin, um, but this is one that I've heard really good things about. I also love these end papers. Oh, and two of them came with bookmarks, which is a big thing because they don't normally, when you get them, uh, ship to you or anything. Um, and then I got The Far Cry by Emma Smith. Um, and it's the pretty end papers. I just love these editions. They're so well bound and I like that they're kind of more obscure writers um, and obscure female writers specifically. I just think oh, they're just so beautiful. And then I got William an Englishman by Cicely Hamilton which yeah this is just uh, just so pretty. I just I love these. I love these editions. They're just they feel beautiful in your hands. They read nicely and just I need to read more of these. They've kind of been ignoring them. I've moved them on my like big bookshelf. They were at the very bottom and now they're kind of midway through because I had to shuffle some things around with all my new books. And then the last two that I bought are three that I never thought I would want to own but I saw them and they're just they're so pretty and I decided to get them and they are the Puffin like Rifle and Co. Uh, editions, the pink Puffin and Bloom ones. I'm missing Little Women, um, but I got they were all nine dollars, so like half price. So I got Anne of Green Gables, which is a Canadian one, by the way. Um, L. M. Montgomery was a Canadian writer. I've actually been to the Anne of Green Gables house in PEI when I was growing up, and yeah, it's just it's just such a beautiful edition. Like the end papers are really nice, and just yes. Um, I got Heidi by Johanna Spirey. Um, I haven't read this one. This is one of the only ones I haven't read from this series. Um, so I'll probably pick this up at some point. It's just, uh, just so pretty. Um, and yeah, for half price, how can you not, how can you not get those? Um, and then I also got A Little Princess by Frances Hodgson Burnett. And just, uh, pretty, so pretty. The end papers too are just, there's my receipt, but yes, absolutely gorgeous. Um, so yeah, those are the massive amount of books that I have accumulated in the past couple months. Like it's not, other than yesterday, it hasn't been like kind of a buying lots of books at one time. It's just kind of been a slow trickle like, oh, I need this or, oh, this is going out of print and I kind of want to make sure I get a copy kind of thing. So yeah, yeah, I bought quite a few books unintentionally, but it's, it's all good. Um, so let me know in the comments down below if you guys have this problem of like accidentally buying a ton of books um, and like not paying attention to what you're buying. This is I think one of those things where I'm just unconsciously buying books. This happens a lot for me. But yeah, I will see you guys in another video. Bye!